Hi everyone, welcome to week four of the Live Life to the Fullest program. Today we'll be talking about ways to improve participation in hobbies, leisures, and other meaningful activities. So let's dive in. Like we discussed in the previous sessions, occupational therapists are uniquely skilled to help others live life to the fullest by providing interventions to address the physical, cognitive, and emotional difficulties an individual faces throughout the cancer care continuum. Our distinct value prioritizes participation in meaningful activities. Occupational therapists help people do the things that they want to do, need to do, and are expected to do. Specifically, for the things that people want to do, which is the emphasis of this week, occupational therapists focus on improving engagement in hobbies, leisures, and other activities that are intrinsically motivating and give meaning to a person's life. We will start off the session with education on the changes and importance of engaging in desired activities, as well as the benefits of starting something new. Then, we will go into specific strategies for participating in social and leisure activities. And as always, we will work on implementing the learned skills by taking action with behavioral activation. The abilities of cancer survivors to engage in activities that they enjoy can be limited by factors directly related to cancer and its treatment, such as the effects of fatigue and low energy level, decreased appetite, nausea or diarrhea, trouble concentrating, shortness of breath, decreased muscle strength, range of motion, and balance. But there are also factors influencing activity engagement unrelated to cancer, which includes changes in interest, financial issues, lack of opportunities, like the seasons and pandemic, how different seasons can change what activities we can do. And of course, the pandemic greatly reduced our options for social and leisure participation. We also want to take a moment to acknowledge that limitations in access to resources and discriminations are societal issues that can cause barriers to participation in meaningful activities for minority, minority groups. We believe the strategies we include in this session can be helpful to all individuals, but we did want to take a moment to recognize the societal barriers an individual in a minority group may face. Today's topic is important as research has shown that participation in hobbies, leisures, and other meaningful activities benefits physical health and wellness of all individuals in many ways. Participation improves your ability to recover from stressful events, increases social interaction, helps you to overcome negative life experiences, improves quality of life, and helps manage side effects from chronic, chronic conditions such as cancer. You don't need to always stick to what you have done in the past. Your ability, interests, and circumstances might have changed, so you can always look into new leisure activities. Starting something new has benefits of its own, and exercising your brain through the act of learning is important at any age. Learning new activities decreases the risk of dementia later in life, provides a sense of pride and accomplishment, increases brain function such as concentration, attention to detail, memory recall, and problem solving, improves feelings of well-being, and depending on the activity that you choose, it could get you more involved in your community and improves social engagement. Next, we're gonna go over strategies for participating in a social or leisure activity. First, you have to choose an activity you would like to participate in. Strategies to choosing an activity are to brainstorm, something you have always wanted to do or liked doing as a child, consider how you already like to spend your time. For me personally, I like to go on walks and be outside. I'm also in a book club, so I really enjoy combining these by listening to an audiobook during my walks. 
Transform what you already enjoy doing in your daily life into a leisure activity. Cooking can be a chore, but it can also be a hobby if it's something you find enjoyable. You can also search online to discover new activities. And lastly, be realistic. What fits into your current life best? Next, it's time to make it happen and put your new activity into action. The first strategy is to be mindful of your time and identify potential free time throughout your day. Take a moment to schedule your leisure activities during this free time. I know I often fill my free time with mindless things like social media and watching TV. Instead, I could put this time towards a new activity that gives meaning and joy to my life. It's also a great idea to participate in leisure activities when you know you may have downtime, such as sitting on a bus or in a waiting room. I personally got into the habit of carrying around my Kindle so I can read a book instead of mindlessly scrolling on my phone during this free time. Next, we recommend that you watch videos or join a class to kickstart your new activity. This is a helpful way to learn a hobby quickly and can provide a fun social environment. The Cancer Caring Center offers a variety of classes that incorporate art, cooking, and other meaningful activities, so keep an eye out for those in the newsletters. Next, it's important to break down the activity into achievable steps to avoid feeling overwhelmed. Also, you can use visualization techniques to imagine yourself completing the activity. If you remember, we talked about the power of visualization during our mental health strategy session. If you're able to imagine yourself completing an activity, you're much more likely to have success in its outcome. And lastly, give it a go. The best way to see what works and how you feel is by trying the activity out. The next step is to plan for success in order to make your participation in a meaningful activity a long-term part of your life. There are many strategies to plan for success that we'll talk about in detail in the following slides. Hobbies can get really expensive. Take golf, for example. A single club can be very costly and it's required to have a whole set of clubs for the hobby. I know that's not very realistic for most people, including myself, but there are a lot of strategies to budget or find and use low cost materials. Budgeting money can get overwhelming and feel time consuming. So start off just keeping track of your expenses and putting them into categories. Once you have everything separated into categories, figure out which one has the most expenses and how you might be able to reduce them. I know that I eat out a lot. I love fast food and knew that's where most of my money went. However, I had no idea how much I was spending on fast food until I laid it out in a spreadsheet. So then I set a small goal or limit for myself and said I would only eat out four nights a week instead of five. Then after I was doing that for a while, I said I would only eat out three nights instead of four. Doing just that simple task helped out with my budget so much. And then start off with low cost materials. Let's go back to that golf example where I said one club can be very costly. There are also beginner sets out there that include almost everything. The bag, the putter, the irons, the woods for a reduced price. Facebook Marketplace and Goodwill are also great starting points for used materials or even renting a set of golf clubs. Don't jump right into the most expensive materials for the hobby. Start off with beginner materials. See if you actually enjoy the hobby then go from there. Same thing goes for painting. An inexpensive paint set with brushes and canvas to paint on can cost less than $25, but for a good set, it can get into the hundreds of dollars. So do some research beforehand. Beginner is always a good word to use when searching for materials as they are usually inexpensive. I also have friends who have bought painting supplies from Five Below and have had great success with them. And also remember, not all hobbies have extraordinary costs or any cost at all. Drawing requires just a pencil and some paper. Reading, you can go to the library or even go to a virtual library and rent free books. And speaking of library, they often frequently have group classes, group hobby days, and group demonstrations. Another hobby, cooking, even though it may seem expensive and time consuming, might save you money in the long run if you are someone like me who chooses to eat out a lot, because cooking at home is a lot more inexpensive and can be an enjoyable activity. So 
So finding the right space. Depending on the hobby, there are different space requirements. You want to organize and designate a space for your new activity. Maybe you want to start painting, so you choose a spot next to a big window in your house. That way you have lots of natural light and lots of scenery to paint. Designating this space also helps you to actually do the hobby because you know you have a spot for it. Instead of having to get out all of your paint stuff each time you want to paint and figure out where to set up, you know that you have your one spot by the big window. And if space is a concern, choose a minimalist hobby that does not require much space. Bird watching is a great example for this. I have been having so much fun bird watching lately. I sit on my porch and watch the birds, and there is an app I downloaded, so when one of the birds chirps, the app will listen and it identify it for me. It's so fun. Another great minimalist hobby is origami. There are tons of videos and tutorials online for origami examples. All you need is paper and a tabletop in front of you. And speaking of virtual, that setting is often more convenient, especially in times like these with the pandemic. There are tons of online tutorials for hobbies and online sites for games. Zoom is so prevalent right now, so there are a lot of online groups. I have even seen group dance lessons via Zoom. That would be so fun. And staying motivated for your no new hobby. I know sometimes I want to start a new hobby and do it once or twice and just give up. So these are some strategies to stay motivated. Don't be afraid of being imperfect, especially if you're a beginner in the hobby. I love to golf, so I keep going back to that example. But it was super frustrating at first when I started playing because I had seen professionals play on TV and expected to be somewhat decent. I was completely wrong. I'm so glad I had someone there with me who had been playing golf for years to reassure me that I was still a beginner and those people on TV were professionals and it's okay not to be perfect. It's a learning experience and it's about having fun and enjoying the time outside and with friends. And started off small. I once told myself that I wanted to learn how to crochet, so I went to Michael's to buy yarn and the tools needed. While at Michael's, I got completely overwhelmed and bought like 10 different balls of yarn because they were just so pretty and I was going to crochet a blanket, a hat, a sweater, a pillow. I never even completed one project. It would have been way better if I had just bought one ball of yarn and went from there. And incorporate the activity into your daily routine. Running is a hobby that a lot of people enjoy. Most of the people I know who enjoy running as a hobby have a set time every single day that they run. They usually wake up every morning before work and run, then start their day. Or I had a friend who would go on a run after work, but she knew that if she went home, she would never find the motivation to go back out. So she packed her gym bag every day and made sure she did her run before going home. So once your hobby is incorporated into your daily routine, it becomes like second nature and you don't even need to think about doing it. It just happens. And find variations in your activity. Challenge yourself with new materials, projects, or styles. Painting, for example, maybe you are using acrylic paint on a canvas while sitting next to your big picture window and you always painted the sunset. So change it up a little bit. Maybe you try using watercolor paints on different paper and you decide to paint the sunrise. Or maybe you always photograph nature when outside on your walks. So change it up and photograph some of your family and friends. Do portraits or headshots, or maybe action so shots of them doing their favorite hobby. Everything in life can be modified to fit your abilities. Just like the modifications we went over in the first session with physical activities, you can modify leisure activities as well. Some modifications we include, suggest include energy conservation, especially if it is physically demanding activity, in which case, please refer back to week one packet for the six P's strategies. Modifying materials. You can find assistive equipment for nearly everything, such as a card holder, a page reader for books, and many more, including built up handles on the tools you're using, like a paintbrush or a cooking utensil, which can help with your grip. Proper body positioning and support. For example, if you are going to sit for long periods of time during your activity, like painting, don't slouch down, but rather sit up tall with your back, feet, and arms supported. 
Finally, if there's a leisure activity you want to get back into or perform better, but your own strategies aren't working, we encourage you to seek help from an occupational therapist where they could provide individual therapy to improve skills or personally adapt the activity appropriately. Now on the screen is an image of the handout we provided with this session's documents. With this handout, we wanted to give some ideas to help you jumpstart a new hobby or leisure activity. We also included pictures of us performing some of our favorite hobbies for your inspiration. Starting a new activity is about finding balance and doing something that is meaningful to you. We've now come to our goal setting part of the session to apply the education and strategies that we just covered. To summarize, the key points of making a goal are to first decide on a specific, realistic, and attainable goal for this week. Second, plan the goal into your schedule, choosing specific days and times to complete your goal. And finally, after the week has ended, go back and check your progress if the goal did or did not work and plan how you could make it easier or more challenging for next week. This is an example of my goal this week on painting. I enjoy painting, but I'm not confident in my skills. So I think painting a small card will be easier, less time consuming, not a lot of materials. And if I mess up, then no harm, no foul. Also as a bonus, then I can save money in actually buying birthday cards. You can now pause this recording and make your goal. Please feel free to refer to my example when doing so. Thank you all for viewing this recording. We want to remind you that if you would like more information to help support your journey to improve participation in hobbies, leisures, and other meaningful activities, the Cancer Caring Center newsletter has an ongoing list of programs and counseling sessions that can help. So feel free to reach out to them at cancercaringpgh at gmail.com.